Chris Eubank Jr. says that the Canelo fight has to happen because so many fans are calling for it. And that's news to me. <laughs> no disrespect to Eubank Jr. I think he's a very entertaining character and a very entertaining fighter. But since signing with PBC and Al Heyman, I'm not trying to criticize him for doing that because at the time it may have looked like a good idea. Al Heyman was talking about making a foray into you know, UK boxing and what have you. The landscape was different. Everybody makes mistakes. But since signing with Heyman, he's kind of drifted off the radar completely. And he did have some momentum after that James DeGale fight. And I believe he actually signed uh, with Heyman before the DeGale fight. I think that was a, a Heyman show. But still, uh, he had momentum following that DeGale fight, but now he's completely lost it and he's drifted off into obscurity. People have completely forgotten about this guy. And, you know, having run a YouTube channel now for 10 years, I have a platform from which I can view the general consensus about certain fighters and certain fights. It's a good platform where I, I can gauge the feeling of boxing fans. And in all the videos I've made about Canelo in recent months, I can't think of many people who brought up Chris Eubank Jr.'s name. So when Chris Eubank Jr. says the fans are calling for it, I mean, maybe they're his followers on Instagram, I don't know. But in terms of the general boxing public, very few people are calling for Chris Eubank Jr. versus Canelo. As I say, unfortunately, Chris Eubank Jr. has kind of drifted off into obscurity at this point. But anyway, he said, quote, I personally would like to fight Canelo. The fight has to happen. It's one of so many fights the fans are calling for. I'm number one contender, so he needs to fight me or give up that belt. I wouldn't say I'm unified. Uh, excuse me. I wouldn't say I'm unfulfilled. I've had a great career, made a name for myself in the sport, and I'm financially stable for the rest of my life. But is there more I can achieve? Absolutely. And I will achieve those things. At this stage of my career, I don't think it's possible to completely change a fighter but I have this renewed energy now with Roy that I didn't think was possible. Now I'm excited about what I am going to learn. I've never really had this relationship with anyone in boxing. I have learned a hell of a lot from my father, but he hasn't been able to be there day in, day out like a real trainer needs to be. This time and moment in history has been a blessing to me. No disrespect to anybody affected negatively by the current situation, but if it hadn't happened, I wouldn't be where I am now, end quote. So, yeah, again, the whole Canelo thing, and I didn't actually realize he was mandatory for Canelo. I'm assuming that is a super middle. Does Canelo still have a belt? Like, Is it the uh, franchise championship belt at middle, or is he just strictly a super middle now? And is Eubank mandatory for him at super middle? I hadn't heard about this. Either way, the fans are not talking about it, <laughs> okay? And as I said earlier on in the video, I think Chris Eubank Jr. is very entertaining. I thought his dad was very entertaining, both as a character and as a, well, yeah, more as a character than a fighter. His dad was in some very entertaining fights, but he also was in some absolute stinkers when he was WBO super middleweight world champion. He was in some absolute stinkers because he fought very negatively in quite a few of his title defenses. But I liked the pompous swagger that Chris Eubank Sr. had. I like the way he would wind up the fans and all that kind of stuff, like a pantomime villain or a wrestling heel. And his son is kind of in that same mold, just a more modern, less eccentric version. And not as entertaining as his dad, as a character, but perhaps more entertaining as a fighter. Yes, he, you know, or should I say, no, he hasn't been in the uh, type of incredible fights that his dad was in, like against Nigel Benn, Steve Collins, so on and so forth. Uh, Eubank's been in some, uh, Eubank Jr. has been in some good fights, but not at that level, okay? But nonetheless, he's been very entertaining. So I don't want to diss Eubank Jr. or anything of the sort, but from an achievement point of view, I hope he manages to fight for a world title again. I wouldn't give him much chance against Canelo. I wouldn't give him more than maybe a 30% chance, 35% chance against Jamal Charlo. 
The old adage in boxing is you're only as good as your last fight. And while that's often not true, it speaks to the reactionary nature of boxing fans to some degree. But it also speaks to the fact that we learn things about fighters as their career progresses. So at one stage, you might have a certain perception about a fighter. Then he puts in a particular performance and your perception changes. That's obviously going to happen. At the same time, fans can get carried away. An example would be Billy Joe Saunders when he fought David Lemieux. He schooled him. And you had a lot of these diehard Saunders fans saying, well, he's going to school Andrade too. And I'm like, hang on. Andrade is a way superior boxer to Lemieux. He can't hit as hard as Lemieux, but he's way more talented and skilled. Lemieux always had terrible footwork and from a style point of view was tailor-made for Billy Joe Saunders. So trying to take Saunders' performance against Andr uh, against uh, Lemieux and say, oh, you do the same to Andr Andrade, I just don't see how there's any correlation there. <laughs> okay, so, so sometimes fans, again, this is the whole thing about you're only as good as your last fight, but Another example would be Jamal Charlo's recent performance against Derevchenko. Because prior to that, a lot of people were skeptical about Jamal Charlo. But after he dominated Derevchenko in the way that he did, he's gone up in so many people's estimation. I mean, before that fight, I want to say that Charlo was definitely favored by most UK fans to beat Eubank Jr., but it wasn't more than maybe 60, 40. But now there's probably 10, 15% of UK fans who would pick Eubank Jr. over Charlo. Charlo showed that he can box, but he always could when somebody comes at him. It's when someone goes walkies <laughs> that Charlo has issues. Does Eubank Jr. have the ability to be able to move backwards and try and outbox Charlo at long range? I know Eubank Jr. does that with short-armed fighters like Avni Yildirim or Arthur Abraham, but Charlo's tall. He's, he, he's as tall as Eubank Jr., if not taller. So I don't think he'd be able to box on the back foot because Eubank Jr. is much better on the back foot than he is coming forward from a defense and offense perspective. But I don't think he'd be able to uh, be that effective on the back foot against Charlo as we've seen him be against other fighters because as I say Charlo has the height and reach where he can touch Eubank Jr. with a jab before he even tries to throw anything else on the front foot you know and if Eubank Jr. wants to go at Jamal Charlo he'll get himself beat up I'm telling you that now because Eubank Jr. on the front foot is very very crude with his attacks he get lit up like a Christmas tree <laughs> so anyway I don't want to be too down on Eubank Jr. Wish him all the best. And he's done very well for himself, by the way. Financially, done great. He's given us some entertain, entertaining fights over the years. Hopefully, he does get at least one more crack. In fact, I say one more crack. Yeah, he fought George Gobbs for the world title. Hopefully, he gets at least one more crack at a, a, a proper world title, not the IBO or anything like that. And maybe he'll surprise us and still come good in the end and become a legitimate world champion. He did hold a version of a world title, like a regular belt back in the days when he beat the lesser of the Chudinov brothers. But, and, and as I say, he had the IBO, but in far, as far as a legit world title, he hasn't had one yet. Maybe there's still time, but he needs to get a move on because as I say, he's drifted off into obscurity since signing with Al Heyman. Is he locked into that contract? Is it impossible for him to get out of it? Maybe come back to the UK and... <laughs> God forbid, uh, I'm sure both uh, junior and senior would hate this, but work with Frank Warren or Eddie Hearn again, because we know that the Eubanks have fallen out with Frank Warren and they're not on the greatest terms with Eddie Hearn, although I don't think it's as acrimonious with Hearn as it is with Warren. So that would probably be the way to go if they could, but who knows? Let's see what happens with Eubank Jr.'s career from here on in. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below.